Hello fellow hams. I thought I'd just do a quick video here since I was going to tear, tear down an old radio. What we have here is the General Electric Master 2 made in the USA in Lynchburg, Virginia. It's an old VHF commercial radio and it's a big hunk of metal. This is just the front of it. It's about, uh, wow, maybe two and a half feet, two feet long, by about a foot and a half wide. <laughs> maybe a, not quite a foot and a half. Big metal beast, heavy steel case. Uh, I'm not fixing this one. Let me reposition the camera and we'll get a better look at it. Alright. Many years ago, this radio was loaned to me, or given to me, to be used as an Echolink simplex node here in Fort Wayne. About 20 years ago, I think, it was. It was retuned to 145.700 simplex, and uh, it served as an Echolink node for about eight years. <sighs> Big steel case. Yeah, big iron. <laughs> this thing's heavy. It's uh, it's solid. It was a uh, 50 watt commercial VHF radio. It was used for uh, oh cities and governments uh, here in Fort Wayne. It was used in the city buses. I know because I worked at a radio shop for a while and we serviced them, tuned them up, tweaked them up, and uh, maintained them. And they were. Uh, they were mounted in the uh, rear luggage area of the city buses, which was quite dirty. They would come out of there just black with road dust and dirt, um, and still operational. I mean, they were built like tanks, solid. These are plastic walls inside of here, but every cover plate, it's not solid, or it's not uh, thin aluminum, that's steel. I think this is the only, yeah. No, that's actually steel. That's not aluminum. Huh. Over the RF uh, filters back there. GE compartmentalized this thing. I'm going to turn it sideways, reposition the camera, and, and see if I can look down into it with, any, with a, a clear enough focus to show you all the different areas inside the radio. Well, that's about as high up as my tripod will go over the bench. Hopefully things are in focus. They were easy to service. They had a nice little diagram on here that showed you where each of the inductors were and a signal path. And then uh, used in, contract, or in, in concert with the service manual, you could uh, tweak and tune them up. This back here is the power amp section. We have two finals and a driver. An associated VHF filtering. This is the incoming RF from the uh, RF section over here. I'm trying to remember, it's been so long. Okay, I think this was all transmit um, uh, filtering and IF, and then this was receiver over here. Frequencies were plugged in here, with these little modules. I'll open that up and we'll have a look inside. I think it's a VFO. I think it was a self-contained VFO. And they would plug into slots and you had uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8 slots, so you could have 8 channels in these that were rem remotely selectable. This is audio section over here. The receiver detector is in that little metal case and then you've got an audio amp and audio transformer. They had a lot of audio power. I forget uh, how many watts of power for the audio, but they could drive a, a speaker in a dump truck and you could hear it. Up front here was interfacing. There was a front connector that would go up to a remote, but there were also header pins along here on all the lines. And I tapped in a uh, control circuit and relay here, audio filtering circuit. And I think I had, yeah, I had a nine pin uh, D connector over here on the side that I brought signals out to the radio with. This is a, 
Oh, that was a receiver module. This is a transmit module, isn't it? Yeah. 145.70T, 145.70R. So you had a separate frequency source for the transmitter and receiver, obviously, so you could use it in repeaters. You just The older radios were crystal controlled. I'm going to open this up. We'll look inside. Um, so anyway, yeah, receiver section, transmitter section. So this is the oscillator processing, modulation, filtering, it was FM uh, modulated, and then RF into the power amp. Switching, antenna switching was over here. Here's your coaxes going over here to the receiver. Um, under here, I think, is the H bridge. It would sense uh, power and uh, SWR, which could be fed back to the uh, control head. So. Big old beast of a radio. Let's open up one of these little uh, modules and see if it's a, a pushed crystal or a VFO. All right, so what we have is a variable crystal oscillator. Yeah, one transistor, obviously an oscillator, some sort of a sealed potted module. Hmm. And our source crystal, 149.4444 megahertz. If that's right, now let's see here it is on the top. 145 R700. No, this is actually a crisp, just a straight up crystal oscillator. So that crystal is actually cut for the frequency 145 700. So it's a self contained crystal oscillator. A little variable cap where you can push the crystal. That is probably a temperature sensor. I think these were temperature compensated. Either that or that's a heat source and this is a crystal oven. I'll bet you this is just a little self-contained crystal oven. Huh. Very neat. Definitely high quality. Alright. So I think what I'm going to do with this guy, I'm not going to try to revive it. I really have no use for it. It's quite old. I think it was a little unstable there towards the end of me using his Echo Link. I can see some uh, mold growing on some of the plastic down there in the receiver module. I think I'm just going to tear it down for parts, see what I can find in here that I can use. I was looking at this power amplifier. It's really very self-contained. In fact, there's screws here and screws here that looks like the power amplifier actually comes out of the frame. Here's your power in, or your voltage in, which would be 12 volts. So there's going to be switching to key it, an RF in here. I almost wonder if I could uh, use this standalone as a 2 meter amp. I might play around with that. I think the only thing I'll keep intact is the power amp. I'm going to tear the rest of it down. But I just thought I'd give you a look inside um, of the GE Master 2 radio. So there you go. Big hunk of iron. Yeah, man, that thing weighs a good 15, 20 pounds. <laughs> All right, well, thanks for watching, 73. Well, one additional little bit, you know, I was talking about it being modular. There you go, complete standalone 50 watt, two meter or VHF amplifier. RF in, antenna out, antenna to the receiver, Relay switching would be right there. 12 volt power right there. And you got a standalone 50 watt amp. So, one of these days I might spend a little time trying to get that thing operational as a 2 meter amplifier. Why not? Take a little bit of tuning up on the filters perhaps, but uh, there you go. 50 watt amp. The rest of the radio's parts. This is going on a shelf. Alright, one more bit on the uh, Master 2 teardown. Took an awful lot of screws out of it and a lot of... Everything's modular. It took a while to take it all apart. Some of these boards show evidence of being worked on. Some resolder work done here. Here. Not very good resolder work. A few cold joints. Something was definitely replaced there. Huh. So the boards are all modular. 
this is the uh, oscillator section and it had this ring that extended over and coupled to a, a capacitor in this filter section. I'm going to show you that in a second. It's really cool. There's the audio board. This is the filter section. You've got these tunable slugs here labeled C, C305, 304, 303, 302. So that's a, a filter chain. But the way this is built, this is a cast piece of metal. Look at that. Inside of each of these, you've got an inductor that runs up in and a little metal plate. And I don't know if you can see inside of there, there's the capacitor plate that you adjust with the screw on the front. And you're gapping that against this plate here. So this was mounted by a screw at the back. You can see that floats. It was mounted by a screw at the back which held this plate static. You adjusted that plate to vary that distance between the capacitor. And uh, had this inductor then that was wound and went to ground right here. I was able to pull this one out because it had been re-soldered and not done correctly. The joint was cold, the pin was just floating loose in the hole. That's why it was flaky. It was flaky when I was using it and uh, that would be why right there. That inductor was not soldered in there to the wall. And I can understand that if this was replaced because you're soldering to this solid plate. That would take a lot of heat, an awful lot of heat to get that solder to melt to that metal. So somebody probably used a conventional iron and replaced this capacitor and uh, yeah, there you go. Anyway, that's the filter section. Isn't that pretty? Thought you might like to see that. Okay. The Master 2 is torn down. I'm going to desolder some parts I'm keeping. But that's it. The GE Master 2. Bye-bye.